Facilities that make this program possible are provided by the City of Highland Park. Programs are produced independently by members of the community. The City of Highland Park is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of the City of Highland Park. Oh. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Dotson and I'm your host for Poetry Today. I'm also the founder and program coordinator for Highland Park Poetry and I'm really happy to have uh, Highland Park poet Dr. Shai Harrell. Uh, he is a historian, a writer, a poet, educator, rabbi, activist, and businessman. He was born in Israel where he spent his formative childhood and young adulthood. Spending most of his time in the U.S., he manages here his financial consulting firm, Harel Financial Group, and runs the global private diplomacy organization, Middle East Peace Network. He also gives lectures and workshops and writes essays on Middle East affairs. Harel earned his BA and MA degrees in Middle Eastern history from Tel Aviv University and his PhD from the University of Chicago. He's the author of several history textbooks, as well as the forthcoming self-help book, Discover the Jewel of Wisdom, Eight Paths of Powerful Leaving, which is a laboratory report of his spiritual journey toward rabbinic ordination. But the reason we're here today is to discuss his upcoming book of poetry entitled Riding the Waves of Bliss, Seasons of Life Poems, which is, offers insight into the changing seasons of his life. Harel lives with his wife, Rosalie, in Highland Park, Illinois. He has three children living in the U.S. and Israel, and 11 grandchildren ranging from age 9 to 20 years old. Wow. Thank you very much for joining thank me. Thank you. I'm thank very you. happy to have you on the, guest, on the show as a guest. And thank you. Ta let's talk about your book. It's, I'm, I'm very excited that you've um, got a full, complete collection of poems, and, and, and I we We've communicated a little bit before this program where you've talked about how there's a special organization for the book. Would you speak to that? Well, um, I had basically, you know, I wrote the book as a bilingual, uh, both Hebrew and English. Mm -hmm. Some I wrote in Hebrew and translated them into English, and some I wrote originally in English and translated them to Hebrew. And when I finished, uh, I, you know, I have a, a, a poetry coach uh, very known, and he, oh. t and he told me that, uh, you know, if you really want to publish it, do it one language, English, okay. because uh, English and Hebrew, it's a very, very, very small market. Okay. <laughs> so, so I uh, basically um, uh, was probably going to publish the bilingual in mm -hmm. Israel okay. and the English one here. That's So we are talking wise. about the, the English, you know, Basically, the English, and uh, you know, I why poetry. You know, I love words. I love mm -hmm. languages. Mm -hmm. You know, I studied many languages, and uh, not only, of course, English and uh, Hebrew and Arabic, okay. and few others. Um, well, I guess I, that comes in handy, especially when you're talking about history in the history, Middle East. History, absolutely. And then it was required for the PhD to know several languages. Okay. Um, but um, I love words. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, every word, if I mentioned before, that soon. Yes. This is just an example of a joke, but, but it's, it's really, it's, um, you know, um, I visited uh, a psychologist. Her name is uh, Dr. Griffin. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, so we're going to have a grief in and grief out. <laughs> she tried to say, oh, <laughs> she laughed. So I like, I like words. I think in poetry is like a concise way of bringing whole notion, whole story in very short yes. format. Mm -hmm. And that's, I love it. I love that type of, uh, you can express yourself in well, a few words. I'm glad that you have a poetry coach. I wish I had a poetry coach. Um, but I have to tell you, there's not a lot of market for poetry, regardless what language you publish it. I agree, Anipis. <laughs> you know what? In every, in, in every, you know, when I went recently, I came back from Israel, 
and I went to, I asked, where is the poetry shelves? And, uh, and I looked, I couldn't find it. And, and it used to be several, in, you know, it shrinks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But you know what? I don't do it for the market. I do it for me. Yes. I enjoy it. I write it. And, and it's fun. It's just mm -hmm. a way, it's a way to, uh, you know, to express uh, myself. This specific uh, uh, book um, is really about my life story. But I think it's, it's a story that applies to everybody. You know, well, sure. Everybody sure. goes through the there same. Are universal themes. Exactly. Yeah. So if um, everybody have a yearning to a glorious past, or everybody are in love, uh, everybody experience unfortunately death. Yeah. And uh, so very few get to write about it. And I did. And interestingly, what triggers my writing mm -hmm. is death. Now, how That's do you explain that? I don't know, but what happened is, you know, my dad um, died from heart attack uh, in 1964, and 1994, I'm sorry, and a year later, my younger brother died from heart attack, oh, wow. and it was such a, I experienced such a trauma, mm -hmm. it was amazing, it was such a pain, and, and, and obviously it was overseas, it was in Israel, so I had to go and rush there twice. Oh, my goodness. And both of them at the same time. And oh, really? You know, like exactly a year, a year later. Apart. Exactly. Oh, wow. And it was really painful. And when I came back, I started to write. And it was, it was such, a, you know, such an experience for me to write. Uh, it was more of a, a healing process for me when I wrote. Well, uh, th while those uh, probably poems, uh, those come later in the book, the poems about death? Do they come? Yes. Them? Do you want? I, I think we should introduce our our listeners to some of what you're <laughs> writing. So why don't why don't we sort of work our way backwards? Maybe you want to read a poem about death since you've already talked okay. about death. Okay. So, you know, the very very last, the very last. It has two parts, but I read only one part. What would I like to have on my tombstone? What should I? What I would mm -hmm. like to write on the, my tombstone. So I'll read it to you. It's called on my tombstone. My dad died, and then my brother died, and now I am dying to live with my back facing backward, far from the valley of darkness, straight into a shining future yet to be born, where I will chisel the tombstone of my life using the flame of my passion for engraving the essence of what my life is all about. And after all that was said and done, he was, he is, and Shelby. Hmm. Wow. So, you know, I, uh, you know, the whole subject on my, you know, in my many other things, I, um, I've been also a life coach. Okay. And one of the exercises that I do for people is, you know, s stand in front of their tombstone and say, what would you like oh. to have, you know, written on your tombstone that will really s summarize your life. It's not easy. Some, it's right. an exercise when people really shed tears, you know. Yeah. And this was, um, you know, something that I felt that, you know, death is enough. It's time for me to really live, you know. So this uh, triggered a lot of, a lot of um, poems on death, you know, on, uh, poems that, like on my mom, how she experienced death twice, mm. her husband and her son. And that's not supposed to happen. I mean... Uh, isn't there a rule that says you're not supposed to see your children pass right, before absolutely. you? Absolutely. And, and so, so there was a lot of, and I, I actually remember sitting on my study and writing the poems and crying and crying. Mm -hmm. And it was really a healing process for me when I finished those poetry. And eventually I, I published all the books, and, and I mean the, the poetry on, for my, my brother only. Um, and it's called um, a, a Psalm for Samuel. His name was Samuel, oh. so it's a psalm, okay, you know, gotcha. and it was all about him. Uh, and it's a death in general. Here's one which is, it's called Three Goddesses of Destiny. Three goddesses decree the destiny of man. Three goddesses rule over the flesh of all flesh and blood. One weaves the wick of life, spinning the spindle and moaning. The second makes the final judgment, who shall live and who shall bound to the altar. 
The third one cuts off the wick, bowing down her head in dignified silence. Each of them fulfill a role, together they make a whole. Thus there is no way out of death, no chance at all to find refuge. Mm. So, because when you think a lot about death, like what is all this about? You know, one, I remember one, one poem, it was a really, and you know, pointing fingers to God. Why did you do that to me? Right. To us, to our family. It was a very strong one about like the question of why. Yeah. You know, like one of the poems was, were about uh, changing the address, it's called. Because I said, I'm going to change the address so the angels of death will not visit us. They, I'm going to oh, confuse yeah. them. So I wrote a, po <laughs> oh, I wrote a, right, po wow. a poem on that, changing okay. the address. Anyway, so. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's great that you have different it's approaches to yes, it, it's whether, it's, whether it's a slightly humorous uh, avenue? Yes, absolutely. Or, um, or anger? Or you know, there are a lot of emotion. humor. One of the them is I'm going down in a, in a public uh, urinary, going down the stairs, and, uh, and uh, I see my dad right by the urinary, and I and, uh, and, I, and uh, ask, what are you doing here? You know, we are not supposed to be together. And, uh, and then I see my brother also there in the urinary, and I said, What's going there? I'm, am I, I'm totally confused, and then I woke up on my uh, dream. Yes. So I got a lot of humor into it as well. Well, I know that's interesting. You, you mentioned that you are a rabbi. Yes. And that you did a lot of training. So now you use words to help people Absolutely. as well. Do you encourage um, people that come to you to write as, a, as a form of... Absolutely. No um, question about it. It's about writing the story, writing about any the experience that they have, to, I, I encourage them to keep a diary, mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, and um, and you know every morning to say I'm thankful, mm. to, gratitude, and then at the end of the day at night, if you can share with your spouse, um, you know, what you are thankful for, what how, what are the things that you are grateful mm -hmm. to happen to you today. At least five or six things. Oh wow! So okay. then you experience it, and then you write it in a diary, day by day, and yeah. you write all the things. It may be even simple, you know, but it's a, a, it's a great experience. You know, you're, you're really about being grateful mm -hmm. to not only to God but to people, to our experiences, mm -hmm. um, and it is a very spiritual. In fact, I I dedicated a whole chapter on spirituality uh, one of them is called it's called awakening and illumination that's okay. the name of the chapter so i can read you too yes that would be great uh it's called seeking illumination it's a very short one in dark days of stillness and leaves falling when everything is cold and gloomy it is opportune time to pause to descend deep into the space of darkness where the splendor of my soul is in full glory only when I take shelter in its light and cleave to its splendid beauty, my spirit is saturated with joy and my whole world is dazzling with brilliant illumination. Hmm. So, wow. so this is about, uh, about illumination. Uh, the other one is more... Uh, well, so it's sort of a, to experience the illumination, uh, you have to descend into darkness. Darkness, and then you yeah. find, and then you, uh, you know, and you share the light, you see the light okay. there. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, uh, the other one is called uh, the tree of life. Okay. It's more Kabbalistic. Okay. And um, um, I'll read it to you. Yes. In my heart, I planted a magnificent garden to house my burning love. And there, in this blossoming paradise, I found a merciful and forgiving God. I did not stop plowing, sowing, bow bowing down and kneeling, worshiping him and Pharaoh after another, even giving him sacrifices and offerings. Now its roots are spreading deep in my heart, feeding fortitude to my trunk of faith, inviting its crowning branches to cover my universe and its hanging fruits to sweeten my meditation. Oh. Mm. So That's this is, um, yeah. you know, it's about e experience. I, I, um, I believe... Um, 
which by the way, all, all traditions have mm -hmm. it, not only Kabbalistic, is that, that there are four worlds, four domains, four parts of our personality. You what know, are those? Body, heart, mind, and spirit. Okay. And, to, and the key is to bring wholeness. Every, every, every part of you should ex express itself. Okay. And when they all express themselves, you, you, know, you feel a you know, sense of wholeness at all of them. You know, when you're young, uh, you focus on body only. <laughs> and then you start to have relationships. Then it's coming, the heart expresses itself. And then you start to study and learning and getting all kind of, you know, uh, degrees, the mind. And very in the later, later years, you start to experience spirituality. And that's what, uh, biblically, if you know the story, about the biblical story of the Jacob's ladder, when he went up, it's basically, each one is a rung. Okay. And you start with the body and ends with sp spirit, the soul. Okay. So, would you a like nice me to? A nice metaphor, yes. We'd love to hear more. Okay. So, so we'll go to oneness and harmony. Um, you know, I've been involved heavily in an organization I created in 1990. Um, and I've been connected, well connected to many leaders and politicians, uh, focusing on what I call private diplomacy. As that's very interesting. I'm, I'm yeah. curious what that's all as about. Opposed to, as opposed to intergovernmental, which okay. we call track one. I'm talking about track two, which is between people to people, between individuals, between societies. Okay. Um, uh, we have different agendas, much more um, soulful, much more um, human. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and it's about br basically building bridges uh, across the divides between mm -hmm. nations. And um, so I've been, you know, I have a website uh, about it. I've, I'm connected to many top politicians mm. everywhere in the Middle East. Wow. Um, you know, my position for them is less threatening because I'm not talking about specific political positions. Okay. But about basically building bridges, mm -hmm. connect, um, and, and um, this is, for example, one poem. It's called Truth, with capital T. <laughs> okay. No such thing as truth. There is truth with capital T, as well as many truth. When your truth merges with mine, like a river joining the vast sea. They become one whole, the whole truth, a, uni a universal truth. Not just yours or mine, but ours. All blend together and blossom like a petaled rose emerging from one stem, offering its sweet fragrance and infinite beauty to humanity. Oh, wow. And one of the you know, one of the books that I wrote recently is about how to build bridges between Islam and Judaism. Okay. Um, and it's not easy, uh, but theologically, and uh, we are one. And I have a, have, and I have a chapter just about, about truth. If we mm -hmm. can really overcome that, there is no such a thing as my truth mm -hmm. is greater than yours, but right. we are part of the whole. Yeah. then that's, that's, that's a, the core or where people fight all the time. Take a look in the Middle East, ISIS, it's about my God. There's no mm -hmm. such a thing as, there's only one God, you know. Yeah. So anyway, so this is one. Well, now, now is, um, do you use poetry to, as, I mean, as it, I, yes, you wrote this poem about oneness and harmony. Um, but do you actually use these yes. poems? I mean, so it's like it's published in... It's a tool. A tool. It's a okay. tool. Uh, in fact, uh, um, I have um, a set of poetry, four, in my book. Okay. And it's, it's called Poetic Conclusion, and it's, it's a quadrilogy, uh, four poems. And they're all, um, as I said, you know, formative, okay. concise, you know, of different... One of these the, is the Shield of David. Okay. And another one is a cup. Another one is a flower. 
and all the uh, and, so and I read them. So you're talking concrete poetry where the image the, of the text on the page exactly offers a symbolic shape. Symbolic shape, and it okay. meant to be, you know, the contents reflect of that shape. Gotcha. Anyway, okay. um, the other one is um, so this was about oneness and harmony. The chapter, this one is love and intimacy. Um, I have a lot of poetry on love. They are all uh, really written to my beloved, my wife. And she's lucky. And she's lucky. And, uh, and um, they were all, the majority were written many, many, many years ago. Some of them are much later. Uh, so this one is, again, is a, it's a poem that's called A Vow. And it's designed like a loving cup that I, that when I gave her a ring, that loving cup was mounted on the ring. Okay. So it was designed in such a way. I'll read it to you. Yes. A vow. I offer you love, for love is a rose. Her name is Rose, by the way. So I offer you love, for love is a rose like the lips of beauty. I offer you laughter, for laughter is joy, like the song of birds. I offer you support, for support is strength, like the, mount like the mountain's rock. I offer you peace, for peace is unity, like the earth joining the sky. I offer you kindness, for kindness is heartfelt warmth, like the sunshine kissing the blossom. I offer you inspiration. For inspiration is exhilaration, like stars that glitter the heavens high. All I ask in return is for you to love me for who I am, for through your love I will receive from you all that I offer. Mm. And, uh, um, and then the last part, when I say all I ask, is basically the foundation oh, wow. of, okay. the, of the cup. And it's... Um, I wrote many of them. In fact, uh, uh, just uh, last November, we had the 50th Congratulations. Uh, wedding anniversary. Wow. And so I, it was, we, we celebrated by going to Israel. So That's wonderful. So the 50th anniversary, and, uh, and it's really wonderful when we have a chance to celebrate. Yeah. You know, some people don't. True, very true. So, so this is about love and intimacy, the title of the chapter. Um, and the next one is called, the title for the chapter is Yearning and Longing. Um, we all have that. You know, we yearn to glorious times in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, we yearn to visit uh, the home that we were born, you know. We earn, you know, I come, you know, I go to see my, the land that I was born. So I visit mm -hmm. there twice a year and I have a house there. It's a vacation home. Mm -hmm. And it's yearning. It's a yearning to see the friends, yearning to see the places, yearning to all kinds of um, just going back. So this is actually the first poem. Ah. And that's a poem about yearning and longing. It's called On Yearning. I'm in a desperate search for a lost paradise. Although I arrived in the promised land, I dream of returning to it. As if I never arrived there at all. I long for the beginning, wanting to feel the one moment before. To return back into the womb, into a tranquil and sweet place, into the mythic land flowing with, with milk and honey. Mm. As I progress with age and the black frame of my death announcement zooms in, a deep urge to return to point zero drives me. As the future seems to get shorter and uncertain, I look back more and more, yearning for a distant past, for the days of my childhood, some, somewhere beyond the fog of time, 
and when I finally arrive at my old home and close the circle, I found out to my disappointment that it does not match the house of my childhood and I can never return to it again, never. Mm. So, and I'm talking about the physical home. Right. So when no, you come no. to physical, no, that's not, you know, it's totally not what I yearned to, right. you know. So, uh, and I, I, you know, I, I took pictures of, of the home and, uh, and it's a huge uh, backyard, I mean, basically courtyard where I used to as a kid run, it was big. But when I came, it was so small, <laughs> <laughs> so little. Everything in my house is so small, so little, everything. And, and uh, so I didn't connect, right. but I yearned yes. to visit uh, there. So this is my poetry. Yeah, no, it's wonderful. And, 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 and it seems like a very interesting book, the, the different sections. And um, I was, you mentioned at the beginning of the show that you have a poetry coach. I'm curious, what, who is your poetry coach? Well, there is a person that, um, you know, Robert McDowell, he has his own uh, website and uh, he's called himself, a, you know, a poetry coach, mentor. Oh, I see. Okay. And um, when I start to write and I wanted to really know if I'm the right track, mm -hmm. so I start to talk to him and I sent a few, okay. he responded and, um, and um, you know, we are still in touch for many, That's many wonderful. years. And uh, it can easily be reached. Well, no, it's good to have a person that you, whose judgment you trust to read your, your poetry and to give you some feedback. Because we write by ourselves. Yeah. You know, you're, you're writing by yourself, and, and so it's, it's nice to get some and sense And the trust them. is the key. Yeah. Uh, I went to uh, an editor in Israel, to his very known poet, to uh, look at my poetry. Okay. And you start to scratch and clean <laughs> and fix, and I told him, that's it. Yeah. I gave him a check for the one session, and I said that it doesn't work for me. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you know, this is my poetry. It's right. not poetry. This is my language. Right. You know. Sure. So you're right. Now, do you have? Um, are you working with a publisher in the United States, or are you working with the uh, one in Israel? Yes, I have a publisher. The, here, I'm. Um, my coach is going to oh, find me I a see. publisher, okay. Okay. Uh, but I may decide to um, self-publish it. Eventually. You know that 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 has really transformed. Um, I mean, it's really transformed, and 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 whereas it used to have self-publishing used to be frowned upon. Um, now I don't think there's any stigma. No problem at all. I don't have a problem. And it's easy. Yeah, it's easy. And I can. I have su such a huge market. Yeah. So many friends, so many well, associates. Well, really, it's a, your po th that that market is going to be what's interested in your poetry, and they're the ones Correct. who are going to be buying the books. Correct. Um, and so, you know, yeah, as you opposed as opposed to my uh, historical, you know, history sure. the history textbooks, they are all, you know, big names. You know, Macmillan, right. uh, Brill. Right. I mean, they are all big names because the issue there is, you know, let them they have access to all the academic circles. Sure. All libraries, universities, yeah. and you know, royalties is not an issue for me. Okay. So well, well, yeah, and we talked about it already. That you're not writing the poetry to absolutely to not. Uh, finance your, no, your well-being, no, but it's, no, it's, it's more not. to. But I know that self-publish. You know, I can have a few, um, um, just a few um, readings mm -hmm. with my books will cover the whole cost if, if there is such a thing cost. <laughs> you know, yeah. but uh, okay. but um, you know, like there's one which I, I may publish in, as a separate, okay, a separate uh, book, uh, which is called a, a celebration of love, and just the love poetry, plus uh, it will be one section. The other section in the book will be all our love letters that we oh, that we uh, exchanged when we were very young, and pictures. Great. That we took, and with drawings, that will be a, that will have enough. Well, that we'll look forward to the, the publication of this book. Thank um, you. The, 
uh, Riding the Waves of Bliss, Seasons of Life poems, and, and also to your next project. Thank you. Yeah, so we, that was, well, and thank you for thank joining you. me and reading all this fabulous poetry. It was thank so you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad to have you as a guest. Thank and you.